What's happening guys? Today I've got an instructional on the Blade 350QX and it's on a very important first step, arming it. Um, I had a problem with this for a couple days when I first got it. Uh, it would work sometimes, sometimes wouldn't. I've read all kinds of printed material, videos, um, all kinds of stuff and nothing. It just would not arm 90% of the time. Um, I've had GPS lock. I've uh, turned GPS off because I was trying it indoors before I stood outside trying to arm it forever. And uh, it was very frustrating, uh, lots of reading, lots of time wasted, and I just wanted to fly this thing already. Uh, there's a few quirks to this chopper, and hopefully in this video series I'm going to do, I'm going to go over them so new owners especially uh, can get out there and fly and fly right uh, based on my uh, learning experiences, I guess you could say. So... I'm going to show you what I was doing wrong, and then I'm going to show you the proper way to arm the quad. So we're going to turn the transmitter on, like usual, and the quad, and let it initialize, like so. Now mine has a, is in safe mode, obviously, with the green light, and it's a constant blinking green light because GPS is off because I'm indoors otherwise it wouldn't uh, it would not arm and spin up so if you are indoors you need to make sure GPS is off or else it will not initialize and, and arm and uh, if you're outside and your GPS is on which is what it is default from the factory um, you need to make sure that it goes to a steady green uh, which means it has GPS locked, because until then, it won't arm either. And I knew all that, and that's fine. So, wait for years to get that steady green before you go ahead and try this. Uh, like I said, mine's going to constantly flash because my GPS is off. And that's for only instructional purposes here. So the biggest thing to remember is to make sure your rate switch right here is in the high position. It will not arm in a low position. That's the first thing. The most important, I guess you could say. Now, some guys had not been able to arm theirs, and they said make sure these trims are all at zero. That's one other tip in case you really have an issue. Uh, the DX6i, they were saying to make sure the trims were up on the throttle here. One or two clicks, and that worked for them. Um, none of that was working for me. Um, the way to arm this is to flick it left to right like I just showed you. So I was doing that. I read it, I made sure my trims were in order, I made sure my rate switch was up, I made sure I had GPS locked about outside or GPS was disabled inside. Nothing. This would not arm. And the way this one arms, unlike other choppers I've had, is that it'll actually spin up. The props will start spinning, it'll be at an idle state, whereas my other choppers would just uh, make a sound and they'd be armed and you just gave a throttle after that and would start flying. This one will actually sit here at an idle with prop spinning ready to go and that's how you know it's armed. So I was going left to right. Left to right. And they say, oh you gotta do it faster. Okay, I think that's fast enough. Okay. Thing I found is that you need to have your throttle at the full zero and it needs to stay there the whole time you're flicking it left to right. So keeping the throttle at the zero position uh, before it arms is what I'm used to, and that's fine. The problem is, what I wasn't used to, and what no one ever actually uh, specified, is that the whole time you're flicking it left to right, because that's a unique procedure to this chopper compared to my other choppers, um, the whole time you're flicking it left to right, you need to keep it at zero. So watch, I'll do it again. Left, right, let go. Left, right, let go. Nothing. You put it at zero. Left, right, let go. And it arms. It's that simple. That one important step can save you a lot of frustration, especially if you're a new owner. Very, very important. Alright, so now we know how to arm the actual quadcopter and get it up and running. What we need to know now, before you ever take off, 
is how to disarm those props from spinning. As I said, and as you just seen in the arming part of it, um, they will spin at an idle, a low RPM idle, um, when it's armed at all times, even with their throttle stick all the way down zero. So we gotta know how to disarm it and cut the power of those blades in case we land uh, you know, next to a person, a wall, we don't wanna start chopping the blades up uh, and uh, ruining it or hurting somebody. So first thing we need to do, of course, is arm it. Now there's three ways to do this. And uh, I have a favorite, and we'll go over each one of them here. So the one way to do it is to take your throttle trim and go down a couple of ticks. And we'll kill it. Now that does take time. Okay. Okay, let's arm it again. The other way you can stop them from spinning is to turn the transmitter off. Now as you can see, both of those have a lag, a delay, whatever you want to call it, and there may be some chopping time in the meantime. Uh, so that's not good. It is a way to disable it, and it's other options um, in case the other methods fail. So as you can see, both of those have their own delay of up to almost two seconds. And uh, that, that can do a lot of damage to your quad if it lands next to a tree or a wall or whatever else. So the best way to do it, let me get this thing back up and running. Alright, i got to arm it again. The best way to kill these blades um, is the return to home function. Now of course this is only going to happen when it's already on the ground. It'll kill the blades instantly. And I like it the best because of that. Let's do that again. As soon as I flick the return to home, it kills them. Absolute best way to do it, and that's the third way to do it. So it's up to you, depends on your situation. Um, of course, if you're flying, hit return to home, it's just going to return to home. Uh, it's not going to drop out of the sky. But if you're, you're on the ground and you're, you're getting close to something, or you're landing close and you want to kill those blades, this would be my choice for sure, to uh, stop the blades and stop the damage pretty much.